So the last few years, we've started what's become a tradition at Meadows Church, starting our year with intentional prayer and fasting. And I don't know about you, I think a lot of people, the prayer part, they're, they're more comfortable with. Like, even if you're not that religious, you probably have maybe prayed or talked to God before, or you've seen somebody do it. Like, I was so happy in my house this week, my daughter Ava came down the stairs and she said, Dad, I have a prayer request. I'm like, oh my gosh, melt my heart. Yes, honey, what is your prayer request? She goes, I want you to pray for our school. I said, absolutely, what's going on? She said, Dad, I need you to pray that it's a snow day tomorrow. And I said, Ava, yeah, okay, if I'm gonna pray for a blizzard, it'll be from Dairy Queen. And, and if you're going, I'll take a butterfinger. You know what I'm saying? So I mean, oh my God, but she got, someone prayed for it, maybe you did, because she got her wish three times this week. So, um, but prayer is powerful, but as is fasting. Fasting, if you don't know, is abstaining from food for a certain amount of time. And uh, and I don't know about you, but that can be difficult. That can be a struggle, because I like food, and you probably do too. Like, you ever get a hankering? Sometimes I get a hankering for some food. I was at the grocery store last week and uh, my eyes locked on to this beautiful thing that was sitting in the freezer. Uh, they're crab stuffed mushrooms. Oh my God, I don't know who came up with those, what saint did that, but praise Jesus because I, I had to pick those up. And so I get them home and then I forget about them. So this week I open up the fridge and there they are. I'm like, I haven't, made, I haven't made them yet. And, and well, you grill those, right? And it doesn't matter what the weather is. I was out grilling in the snow, in the cold. Uh, in fact, here's a picture of me grilling those little delicacy delicacies. And here's the best part. My family doesn't like them. So it's up to me to eat them, all of them. And I'm up to the challenge. So, um, so I ate all of them. So if, if your friends or family ever ask, hey, has your pastor ever ate shrooms? Now you know the answer. So it's, that's just good conversation. But to deny the importance of fasting would be difficult when you look at scripture. Like if it was only in the Bible once or twice, we could maybe skirt around it and never have to address it. But fasting's actually listed in the word of God over 70 times. So obviously God wants us to know something. We know that everything in the word of God is not because God wants to take something from us, but he has something for us. So fasting is for you. Fasting is for me. Old Testament, it's in there. New Testament, it's in there. So, so we're going to drill down on both, but let me give you kind of an overarching theme for this series called Fast Forward Faith. In the next few weeks, we're going to look at people in the Word of God who both prayed and fasted, and we're going to look at how it impacted their lives and the lives of others. But today, we're setting an overarching theme. We're asking the question, why? Like, like, why do we start the year this way? Why do, we, why do we dedicate the first part of the year to God through prayer and fasting in a new year? Because make no mistake, that is exactly what we're doing. We're giving God the first. And there's something about that that's powerful. When you give God the first of your day, when you give God the first of your week, when you give God the first of your year, when you give God the first of your income, anything like that, you are making a declaration that, that you are depending on him, that your reliance is on him and him alone. That's why this is so exciting. We're, we're relying on God. So let me give you a couple verses to set the tone for the series. Romans 1 and 2. Now, these are key. And uh, it's so important that you, you know these because this is crucial. Romans 1 and 2. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. So dedicate yourselves, all of yourself. Let them, your body, be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Don't copy the behavior or customs of the world, but let God transform you. Type transform in the comments if you're watching. Transform you into a new person by changing the way you what? Yeah, the way you think starts here, ends here. Changing the way you think, then you will learn to know God's will for you. Don't, don't we all want to know God's will? Which is good. It's pleasing and perfect. In this scripture, we're learning that, that we're, we're to turn away from the things that the world offers and turn to what God offers, and it happens through a transforming in our mind. People are looking for breakthroughs, wondering why they can't break through. It's because the breakthrough happens here. It starts in your mind with the way that you think. So, why does prayer matter? I'll tell you why. Because prayer attaches you to God. 
Prayer attaches you to God. It restores our intimacy with Him, our reliance on Him, and Him alone. Prayer attaches you and me to God. Why does fasting matter? Because fasting detaches you from the world. For, from, from what the world offers, from, what the, from the pitfalls, from the temptations, from the distractions. Fasting detaches you from the world. And you might be thinking, well, why is the world such a bad thing? Well, you know, what the world offers is, is so opposite of what God has for you. In fact, Jesus himself, listen to what Jesus said about what the world values. In Luke 16, 15, Jesus speaking, what people value in this world is highly detestable in God's sight. Why is it detestable? Because it's taking from you. Because in the long run, if we keep searching and looking for, for answers and for relief and reprieve and what the world offers, it's gonna keep taking from us and keep hurting us and hold us down. And God doesn't want that. Prayer attaches us to God. Fasting detaches us from the world. And prayer and fasting, by the way, it will take our faith to another level. And isn't that the goal? Fasting, I like to say it this way, prayer and fasting, fast forwards your faith. That's a lot of F words, but kids, feel free to share those with your friends. Those are the good ones. Fasting and prayer fast forwards our faith. So many people want change. You want change. I want change in the world. We, it's a new year, right? Let me tell you, let me, this series is going to springboard you into it. If you, will, if you will listen to what God is saying in the word and, and do what he's telling you to do. Let me tell you who the, who the series is for. Anybody who's, who's desperately looking for an area of your life to change, if that's you, this, this series is for you. Anybody looking for healing or a miracle, like Packers fans, right? <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, I had to, I had to do it. So, but, but seriously, yeah, looking for healing or a miracle, this is for you. Anybody who, you have a friend or a family member that uh, doesn't know the Lord, you want them to meet Jesus, this is for you. Anybody who is desperately wanting to get closer and more intimate with God, this is for you. Anybody who has a dream inside of you that's only possible to be lived out if God shows up, this is for you. And, and, and this one hits home, this last one. Anyone desperate to break away from the bondage that you're living in, that's holding you back, that's holding you down, this series, Fast Forward Faith, it's for you. And I'm going to say something. Because, because that one's personal for me and, and, and the life that I've lived and bondage. When you come to know Jesus, it sets you free. I mean, we say, Christians will say this all the time. Who the sun sets free is, yeah, see, you know it, free indeed. But here's the problem. There are, there are many people declaring freedom, but, there's, but they're still living out in their sin. I mean, I'll say it a different way. How did I write it down? Even though you may know Christ, see, you're, in a still, you're still in a spiritual battle. See, there, there's people listening right now, and you know who you are. Your sins have been forgiven, but your sinful nature is still winning battles. Your sinful nature is still holding you back. If that's you, I've got hope for you. It was Paul, too. If you don't know who he was, he wrote much of the New Testament, all the letters to churches and to us, Ephesians, Galatians, Romans that we're reading out of today. Paul wrote him. Paul met Jesus and was transformed. Yet there were periods where he struggled in bondage and in sin. Sarah, last week, he did, I don't even know if he knew he was setting the tone for this series, but he was, and he did a masterful job doing it because in Romans 6 that he unpacked, it leads into the scripture that we're getting into today, Romans 7 and 8. Let me share Romans 7 with you, and remember, remember where it starts, right? Type in the mind. Say, in the mind. Now, now Romans 7 to 15, this is Paul. This is, he's struggling. He's in Christ, but, he, but he's a wreck. I don't really understand myself, Romans 7, 15. For I want to do what is right, but I don't do it. Instead, I do what I hate. I, can you relate to that? Like, how am I doing this again? Like, I told myself I wouldn't do it. I told myself I wouldn't go there anymore, and yet here I find myself in Walmart once again. I mean, how does it keep happening? How do I keep making these decisions? We continue in Romans 7, and 23. Paul says, I love God's law with all my heart, but there is another power 
at war with my mind, in my mind. Don't miss that. The power makes me a slave to the sin that's still within me. Paul knows Christ, but sin he still has a sinful nature. And, and he's recognizing that, and he's actually t telling us about it. Let's go to Romans 8 for a second. So Romans 8, 5, and 6. Those who are dominated by their sinful nature think about sinful things, right? Those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit think about things that please the Holy Spirit. It's in the mind. So letting your sinful thoughts control, or letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death. Letting the Spirit control your mind, what's that lead to? Life and peace. You know what Paul is saying here? What we feed on thrives. What we feed thrives. What we starve dies. That's, I'm going to say it again. What we feed, what you and I feed into our minds will thrive. What we starve dies. Some of you know that I've been writing a book that I started back in 1947. It, it should come out in the next few decades, but actually, actually we're in the editing process, so we're getting there. But I've shared before that the opening scene in the book is, is when I was in, that, I was in uh, my closet kneeling down, holding drugs and begging God, begging God to, 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 that I wouldn't do them, that, that God would remove this desire from me. And it was just, and listen to me, Drugs are what I was holding on to. What's your thing? It, it, maybe it's not addiction. Maybe for you, you're holding on in this new year already, you're holding on to resentment, or you're holding on to unforgiveness, or you're, you're holding on to your codependency, or your anger, or your trauma, your past abuse, wh whatever it is. I'm telling you, whatever you're holding on to, it started in the mind. That is where it started, and by the way, I got I to tell you, life recovery, our recovery ministry for all of that, for anything that you struggle with, life issues, it is coming soon. It's starting February 1st, Thursday nights at the church, 6.30 to 8, child care provided. You're going to hear more about that in the, in the coming weeks. But I am, I am so excited. We are a church of recovery. And uh, this ministry can't come quick enough for so many of us. You struggle with life issues? You do. But this, this ministry... That ministry is for you. So prayer is powerful, but here's the problem with the prayer that I prayed in the closet that day. My mind was already made up. Before I knelt, before I extended my arms, before I cried out to God, my mind was already made up. God, you're not going to answer. God, you're not going to show up. God, you're not going to help. God, I'm gonna do what I've always done, and that's how it's gonna be. And guess what? That's exactly how it was, why? because I, I was still feeding the wrong things in my mind. And I, I wasn't starving the things that I should have been starving, the addiction, the things that were coming at me. Listen to me. Authentic prayer that starts in the mind and connecting to God attaches you to Him. Fasting detaches us from the world. Some of the, some of the content and inspiration from the series is from a book that I talked about last year and it's in a message called Pray First. Um, the bracelets, where, where is it at? Here, I got a few of them. But this Pray First bracelet, we got these at the church and we got more of them, they're free. We want you to have it to remind you to pray first. Put that in the comments, pray first. Let me, let me give you a little blurb that the author talked about when he talked about like specifically fasting. I loved it because he ties it to repentance, the turning away that, that Sarah talked about last week. He says, Fasting actually represents repentance. Your desire to turn away from the things of the world and redirect your life towards God. It's a time of purifying ourselves before God, emptying ourselves of our, of our indulgent appetites and pleasurable distractions so we can discover more of God's presence in our lives, make room for more of God's goodness in our lives. What I'm about to say next, you might think is bad news, but I promise you it is not. But 2024 is not going to be your year. It isn't. It is not your year, and I pray that it's not my year. 2024, God's year. See, I don't want my will in 2024. I want His. And you should want the same. That is our declaration. Prayer and fasting is about less of you, less of me, and more of God. Prayer and fasting is about less of us and more of God. Let's, let, let me close out the scripture 
in, we, went, we, we went from Romans 7 to Romans 8. Paul's struggling. He's a wreck. Why am I doing what I don't want to do? It's, it's in the mind. He knows this. Listen to what he says in Romans 8, 12 through 14. Dear brothers and sisters, you have no obligation to do what your sinful nature urges you. In other words, the things that you're doing that you don't want to do, there is a way out. You're not, a, you're not obliged to do it. You don't have to do it. Paul says, for if you live by, by that, what it dictates, the sinful spirit, you're going to die. But if through the power of the spirit you put to death the deeds of your sinful nature, you will live. For all who are led by the spirit of God are children of God. I'm telling you, when we bring God into us, when we attach to him, we thrive. When we detach from what the world is offering and the things that we keep trying to fill up with that are killing us, we starve that. We, that, that is, th this is the key. So, fasting and prayer. We're going to talk about both. Both are important, but I'm going to probably hone more in on fasting because I think that, that is maybe more foreign to people. Um, I'm going to tell you, I have not... I only really started fasting in, in, together in the last few years. And there's really... Um, let's not overcomplicate it. There's four different types of fasts. And what I'm about to tell you, we've, we've created resources on our website, on our prayer page, meadows.church. Go to the prayer page. Plus, actually, there's a button right on the homepage. And it says 21 days of prayer and fasting. Click on that. All this comes up. But the four types of fasts, uh, there's a complete fast. And that's exactly what you might think it, it is. It's a complete fast. You're not... You're, you're, uh, there's a certain amount of time that you're not eating. You're just drinking liquids, water, maybe some juice. Uh, for some of you, maybe coffee still included. If the others around you want to stay alive, I mean, you know who you are. So, but this fast is a complete fast where you're not eating at all for a certain amount, certain amount of time. I got to give a disclaimer because there's always somebody that's going to go overboard and be flopping around on the floor in the doctor's office. Well, my pastor said, don't. No, no, I'm going to read this. Always seek medical supervision and the approval of your doctor and healthcare professionals before beginning any kind of a fast that involves your diet or nutrition. Okay? There. I'm off the hook. So, complete fast. A selective fast. This is a fast where this probably isn't hard to, uh, to denote. It, this is where you, uh, you would leave out certain select foods, right? You would abstain from them. A common one is a Daniel fast. Uh, this will shock you, but that's actually, that's actually found in the book of Daniel. And uh, uh, Daniel actually, you know, lived that out. It was, it was eating vegetables only and, and drinking water. That's a selective fast where you're doing just that. Um, other selective fasts, people will, uh, they can leave things out. Like some leave out sugar, right? Some leave out dairy or grains. Um, I don't like to brag because the Bible says we shouldn't brag about fasting. But I mean, I do selective fasts every day. Uh, kale, I leave that out. Broccoli and, and pancakes. And you might be shocked. Pancakes? Yeah, pancakes. It's something about just the sponginess. I don't know. Plus, there's some childhood trauma attached to that that I don't have time to get into right now. But anyway, so a selective fast. You're only eating certain foods. Uh, number three, a partial fast. This is where you're um, only eating part of the day. You, a common thing is eating one meal a day, and during the other meal times, you're focused on God, you're praying to God, you're reading scripture. That's one that we're going to do together as a church, and uh, I'll share more of that in just a minute. Last but not least, and other than food fast, uh, for some, maybe for uh, dietary reasons or health reasons, they, they, they can't fast from food. Um, so you give up other things that have become maybe too important to you. I wrote down some uh, ideas. Social media movies, news, TV, music, video games, things that you can fast from. See, fasting isn't as much about food as it is God removing the things from our life that are keeping the, us from him. We want to draw close to God. That's the whole idea of prayer and fasting is to, 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 to starve ourselves from things of the world and, and feed on the things of God and, and watch what God does in our life. So, I'm going to be real practical here. How can you be a part of this? Because I want you to be a part. There are three specific ways that you can be a part. Okay. Number one, join us every weekend as we go through. Because this technically starts, 21 days of fasting starts on 20, the 21st. 21 on 21. So next Sunday, we, we will start together. And so join us every weekend as we teach on the power and necessity of prayer and fasting through this series, Fast Forward faith. Join us every weekend. Number two, 
We've created, I mentioned this earlier, but we've created a devo devotional journey just for you that, that is on our website. Again, you can access it on the button on the homepage or just go to the prayer page. It's gonna highlight the four different ways we talked about. It's gonna highlight uh, every day starting on the 21st. It's gonna give you scripture and a little tiny devotional that you can focus on for that day. And we're gonna do that together. So, so use that resource, let's use it together. Number three, last but not least, um, we're gonna do a collective fast together. I think sometimes we'll say, okay, fast, whatever way God leads you, and you know, it's easy to you know, not do anything because everybody's doing something different. And you can do something different if God leads you to based on what we talked about with the fast, but this is really what I wanna encourage. I wanna encourage us all to do it together. At the same way, you can modify if needed, but this is what we're, this is what we're gonna do, do together. We're gonna start fasting on the 21st, three days a week. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday of those three weeks. We're gonna fast and it's gonna be a partial fast. So from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. From 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. for the vast majority, just liquids only. Um, others, depending on your needs, you might have to do more or less, but um, that's what it is. Those nine days during the 21 specifically, in addition to whatever else God leads you to do. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, again, this will be on the website as well, so you don't have to remember everything, but 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., those three weeks. Listen to me. Regardless of what, you, what fast you choose or plan that you choose, know that God is working and moving, even when you don't see it, even when you don't feel it. Because there will be times that you don't see it and you don't feel it, but you have to trust it. I, uh, man, I can't get too specific here because it's too personal right now. But just the last couple weeks, man, I've just been going through something. And I have to tell you something that, that, I mean, I don't know if you've ever been to a point where you don't have answers. I mean, you, you, you've tried it all, you've, you, you've done this, and then you've adjusted to this, and then you've done it this way, and then I'll try it the other way, and you keep trying things. Well, this is where I was at, and I was like, I told people close to me, my purpose group, uh, some people that I can really, I, you know, I trust and love, and they were the first ones I reached out to, and I was sharing with them that something in me broke. And I'm like, and I told God, God, I don't know if you'll put it back together, you can, but I don't, I don't know. But there's something in me that's different. And it was just broke. And uh, <laughs> uh, so after a couple days, and I remember telling God, and no, no, but type A personality, leader, leader of a church, leader of a family, don't want to admit this, but I'm like, I remember telling God, God, I don't know what to do. Like, I have no idea what to do. Like, I, I'm, I'm just, too, I'm utterly clueless. And I just, and maybe, that, maybe that's what God needed to bring me. Maybe that's exactly the goal. And I was telling my, my, my guys this in my group and a couple days later, I started a 24 hour fast. And after the 24 hours, I, I mean, I'd love to tell you, oh my gosh, the, the sea parted, uh, miracles happened, you know, the clouds, the, the sun burst through. That didn't happen. Here's what happened at the end of the 24 hour fast. There was a glimmer of hope. The sun wasn't bursting through, but there was light. There was a little sliver of light. Things didn't completely turn around, but, but the tide started to shift just, just barely. And I remember thinking, God, this is, I mean, there's hope in this. And what felt like a hopeless situation, there's hope in this. And that happened through a fast. So I think many times we think prayer and fasting, there's going to be breakthrough. And I hope there is. There can be. We should expect uh, these, these miracles. And there can be. You should expect them. But here's what I learned this last week. And maybe this is where you're at. I learned that through prayer and fasting, God can move through mourning and grief as we mourn, as we grieve. And maybe that's where you're at. There's, in 2 Samuel, I don't have time today, but David, if you read 2 Samuel, uh, did I write it down? Yeah, right in the first chapter, the king dies, Saul dies. His best friend, Jonathan, dead on the battlefield. Thousands of others dead. David, what does he do? I, I, it's crazy. He, 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 they mourn, they grieve, and they fast. And I'm like, that's what I needed. So here's, your, here's my encouragement to you. And this is for whoever is going through something like this. As you grieve, as you mourn, I want you to trust that God is with you. 
As you seek the wisdom of God through these 21 days, I want you to believe that God will answer. As you seek, as you ask for power and protection, I want you to to know that God is moving even when it doesn't seem like he's moving. As you say no to the good things and yes to the God things, I want you to, to, to believe that God is pleased with those decisions as you continually Cry out to God. Trust that God has you in the palm of his hand. Trust that he is moving. Trust that God is renewing your mind day by day, minute by minute, hour by hour, in the good things and in the bad things, in the ups and the downs, and in all of it, give God glory because he is good and he is worthy and he is always moving and working even when you don't see it. This isn't your year, God. We declare it's your year. Let's make a declaration together. It's not our year, God. This is your year. And we're dedicating it to you and all that you want to do in our lives. I I love you so much. God loves you so much more. And one of the best things you can do is, is start the year with surrender and giving everything to him. It, I have, what I didn't read to you was in the middle of what we read in Romans 7 and Romans 8, it, it was Paul crying out and saying, I am a train wreck. I, I, I know better. I've been taught better. I've met Jesus face to face and I'm still off the rails. Can you relate to that? Maybe that's you right now off the rails already in 2024. Oh my gosh, you're, you're not alone. You are not alone. God brought you here to this message for this reason. So so Paul cries out at the end of Romans 24 and 25, what a miserable person I've become. What a train wreck I've become. Who's going to free me from my life, from my sin that dominates me? Who will do it? Verse 25, this is for you. Thank God. The answer is Jesus Christ, our Lord. He is where it starts and ends. And for somebody today, you, you maybe you've been taught or you believe that, you know, I got to be good to get with God. I got to be good and to get into heaven. Well, you don't need to be good. You just need to be saved. And to be saved means that you receive God's grace. That just means I'm, I'm receiving something that I don't deserve. God loves me. Despite where I've been, despite what I've done, I'm going to receive his grace and his mercy. And by faith, type in faith in the comments, by faith, I believe Jesus Christ is the son of God, the savior of the world. I believe that he was dead on a cross, died for my sins. I believe that three days later, our God, this is what separates Christianity from every other religion, by the way, our God died for us didn't stay dead though. Three days later, he rose from the dead. And that miracle, the greatest miracle in history is the reason that you and I have hope. It's the reason that we can preach these messages and believe that God is moving and working even when we don't see it. So for somebody here, your next step is to surrender and say, I don't want my way anymore. I want God's way. I'm not good and I know it, but God is. And he sent Jesus to save me and set me free. You want that? I have a number just for you. We'll put it on the screen as well. As well, Text 402-628-7166. You can type, I choose Jesus in the comments, or you can text Jesus, just that word, to 402-628-7166. Good people don't go to heaven, saved people do. You're saved by God's grace through faith. When you sell out to Jesus, you believe he's the son of God, the savior of the world. He died for you. That's how much he loves you. That's what you're worth. Man. I am so jacked up about fast forward faith and what God wants to do. Receive his grace today. Receive his mercy today. You are loved and valued. The King of kings and Lord of lords looks at you today with a smile on his face and says, man, I have a great life for you. I have an abundant life for you, but just give it to me. Like I had to do that day this week and just say, God, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm a wreck. And God says, thank God you finally admit it. Now let me take over and I will change your world. He wants to change your world. Let me pray for you. God, I thank you for your word and your truth. I thank you for the series that you've given us, Fast Forward Faith. I thank you for the examples that we're going to learn about together in the word of God. People like David who who prayed fervently and experienced tremendous heartache and struggle, but yet yet he he sought you. He he didn't give up on you, God, and he he fasted to, to, to detach from the world. He prayed to attach to you, God. Make, help us be a people, a church that will do just that. That we are in this together, God. We know our next steps. We know the three things we can do to really connect to this series and connect to you. God, I pray that we do it. We have the resources. We have the tools. 
God, give us the heart. Give us change in our mind that we, have the, that we want it, that we truly want to seek you and want something different for, for this year, for our lives, for others around us. This is it. It isn't our year, God. It's your year. Have your way. And for the people that are choosing you today, Jesus, we give you glory. We thank you for people coming and accepting you by the, your grace through their faith. God, thank you for saving us and setting us free. In you, the best is yet to come. In Jesus' name I pray. And the church says, and the church types, amen. God bless you. Hey, I want to thank you so much for tuning in today. But don't stop there. Like or subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a single video, update, or message. And not only that, share this message with a friend or somebody that you know. So many people out there need hope and encouragement, and you have the ability to bring that to them. Finally, if you're in the Omaha area, we would love to have you join us. We would love to meet you. God bless you.